Okay, so this is me, I'm Ulf Sandstrom, and I'm here with Liz, and we're going to do a real session with Liz, uh, where we, well, probably, and our intention is to use role havening, uh, because as you were saying, Liz, you're also a practitioner of this, and it's, it seems to be rather less explored than it might be. Mm -hmm. I think so. I, I did uh, hypnotherapy a few years ago, and as part of that, we did something called... Um, uh, dialogue with a herter, which is effectively the same thing. Um, we had very strong rules about what you could do and not do. And so... Uh, what, could, what could you not do? That would be the most interesting thing. Yeah. You could not allow um, an abuser to have a voice. It was just yours. Um that was important, but also it was something that came from the person um, because the view was that in the subconscious, you knew your mother, you knew why she did things subconsciously. So it was a good way um, to allow a conversation um, with your mother, for example, um, if it came from myself um, and you were allowed to guide. Mm. But, uh, and the our problem often was that sometimes the abuser or um, person that had wronged you or, or or that you didn't make resolution with uh, didn't want to know you still. So yeah. you could have that option where they didn't want to apologize. Yeah, exactly. And, um, that, and that's, that's why yeah. there was a long discussion thread in the, in the forum uh, about mm -hmm. this. So mm -hmm. I'm an avid, uh, I, I keep saying that everything needs to be clean and also, that the answer to absolutely everything in the whole wild world, you know what my answer is? It depends. <laughs> exactly. It depends. So, you know, I would never be categorically saying that you should or shouldn't be um, giving an abuser a voice. Uh, mm -hmm. But I do say that it has to be clean. Uh, and the voice has to come from inside the person who has met that person. Otherwise, you are imposing new things. But mm -hmm. let's get going with the session because I need to start. So let's okay. do this. Put your hands together. And even though you and I know this is evening, I'll be explaining it exactly the way I do with any client. So th this is for the benefit of anybody who hasn't seen this before, okay? Mm -hmm. So I, I want you to do this with your hands and I want you to do it as if you're rolling a glass pearl between them. Just imagine that for a moment. So you, you don't want to drop it and you don't want to crush it. That's the amount of pressure that you want to find. Now, since this is clean, that means that only you know what that means, right? But I also want you to tell me, are your hands warm or cold? Warm. Okay. Are they hot or humid? Are they humid or dry? A little bit humid. Yeah. And so, you see, I don't care. Really, it doesn't really matter if they're warm or cold or dry or uh, humid. But I want you to activate your sensomotoric system because now your brains, both halves of your brain are bilaterally talking to the palms of your hands and reporting back and everything in between, which means now your emotions are online, literally. And also we have a safety belt, an emotional safety belt driven by neurobiology. As long as your hands are moving, you cannot have a panic attack. You cannot be overwhelmed by emotion to the point of flooding. It's impossible. To do that, you need to stop your hands because when your brain is in panic, it stops an activity like this. So we're, we're actually prophylactically doing a delta wave just to make sure that whatever turns up in this session, since we're on Zoom, and I, I don't know if you have anybody there with you. I don't have your phone number. I should have checked that. I do have your phone number. So anyhow, and you have two dogs that can take care of you, right? One is a Pomeranian. Yeah. But, um... and, and see... I mentioned that because I want, I thought it would evoke a smile from you and it did. And the re <laughs> you see, we're doing a session here. Everything I say has to do with this session. Everything I say, exactly every word, everything has a conscious or subconscious intent, mm -hmm. including my explanations. So I want you to see if you can think of something, a living creature, a Pomeranian, a person, a memory of the past or future that you feel safe with and that would make you smile. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can close your eyes if you wish, mm -hmm. but only if you're safe to do so. And I always ask that because for some people, when they close their eyes, the 
Cinema Inside starts. And I want you to go to that safe place, animal, thing, memory, fantasy that will bring a smile to your face and make you feel safe right now. Mm -hmm. Here you go. And I'm calibrating your smile as we go along. And you can, you know, you can enhance that experience by stepping into it and really being there. Notice what it sounds like. What is it like? Is there a noise? Is there a temperature? Tell me something. What can you see? Uh, I see both my dogs hmm. every night before and yes, they go to sleep. They come and, and cuddle. Oh, they come and cuddle. So mm -hmm. do you actually, is it like they are cuddling with you right now? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and when they do that, what do you feel in your body? Um, warmth. And where in your body do you feel warmth? Floods down everywhere. Floods down? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And when warmth floods down, what is that like? It's like um, a rainbow. A rainbow? Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A rainbow with little drops of rain. <laughs> yeah. And what would a rainbow with little drops of rain want to have happen next? Uh, just to wash away everything from the day. Wash away and... everything from the day? Mm -hmm. And yeah. just um, set up peace for the night. Right, peace for the night. So tell me, um, in a little while we're going to change subject. If you f get tired of doing this with your hands, there are two other movements. We mm -hmm. can just check them out so you've seen them. One is that you go from your shoulder and down, mm -hmm. and you can just compare them. You know, which one of these two do you feel is, is feels more comforting or soothing or, or mm -hmm. safe right now? This one. This one, okay. So this is a bilateral, bihemispherical stimulation. So by crossing your arms, you actually get more effect. If you put on a QEEG cap, you will find that there's a pattern like this going on because left brain is talking to right hand, is talking to left shoulder, is reporting to right brain, is mm -hmm. telling left brain, right? And the same thing the other way around. So that's probably one of the reasons why the brain thinks that we're okay because we're doing this and we're experiencing it. Mm -hmm. So there is a safety to it. There is a third way of doing self-havening, which is like this in the face, as if you're washing your face. And you can just choose whichever one you want. As you choose the one you want, I'd like you to just try this, just moving slightly from side to side. It's called shuckling in Jewish prayer. It's, they do it in Tibetan prayer. They do it in a lot of praying traditions, in, including Buddhist praying. Sometimes called pelvic floor exercise in yoga, and it actually engages loads of muscles also that you wouldn't be doing if you were frozen in a free state. Mm -hmm. And by doing this, I now have your hands and your movement to calibrate you with. Mm -hmm. So if you suddenly stop, I know that something's going on, and I'll tell you, please continue. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. So you had a real issue. This is a real session. You had a real issue. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you tell me something about it? Sure. Just very uh, short. Yeah, very short. It's really about my about my sister, but it well, it is about her. Um, approximately, oh, I don't know how long. Uh, 2014, my dad died. Uh, I think about five years before that, she emigrated to New Zealand. And um, when they went there, later on, we, we realized they came to the decision that they were never going to return to the UK, whatever. They made that decision when they left, and my father had several strokes, and so before he died, I had to visit him many times. Um, and then I was the only one who could take care of my mum, who died in 2018. So um, during that time, there was lots of other things going on in my life. I, I hear I hear you have, you know, I, I hear in your voice that keep going with your hands. Keep going. Please keep going. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to I hear your story out. But the thing is this, <clears throat> we are opening so many different issues right now. So yeah. it becomes quite complex. So I would like you to just take a stop right there. Yeah. And just tell me what you're experiencing right now yeah. internally. Um, I'm trying to suppress feelings that I've suppressed for I, you. I see that. That's why we stopped. So yeah. ju just just go inside and just know what you know inside now. Where in your body do you feel something? Um, diaphragm. Diaphragm, okay. And where in diaphragm? Uh, where right there? Right across. It's like right a, across? And what is that like? It's like 
Is that... <laughs> there you go. So yeah. we're back to safety now because now we're laughing. That's social engagement. See? Okay. Now you're out of the now you're out of that and we calibrated that. Are you okay? Or do you agree okay. with me? No, no, that's great. I'm good. I'm good. Good. So so when you feel that in diaphragm, you see, I don't need more story. We have enough. Enough is open. Yeah. Okay. But mm -hmm. I just want to say one more. Can I say one thing? Sure. Um, after my mother died, um, she became the estate and not a person anymore. Yeah. And there was this letter that came from my sister that went to 14 other people about me. And that's, ah, and that's why I want you to stop and not go all the way because you're going straight to the one. And I don't want to go there. You see, mm -hmm. I would like you to go back to when you're saying goodnight to your two dogs and they're in bed and they're snuggling with you. I would like you to pick up that smile right now. Mm -hmm. Do you find it? Almost. Wait a sec. Yeah. You know what it feels like when you cuddle them? Yeah. Yeah. And there's a very special smell of a wet dog. Have you ever had that? <laughs> it's the worst. <laughs> uh, we have a, we have actually have a glove in Sweden for winter that's made out of sheep's wool. That when it gets wet and you throw snowballs, it smells like a wet dog. Oh and God. every kid knows that. Yeah. But it's not. I mean, it doesn't smell pleasant. But at, at the mm -hmm. same time, it's not dangerous. Mm -hmm. I mean, you love the dog, don't you? Absolutely, yes, but uh, sometimes, <laughs> no, but that's all part of it. Yeah, I mean, you can love, you know, th there can be love at a distance as well, can't there? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah exactly. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. well, so here's the thing. Mm. I'd like you to tell me, what's the fourth letter in Pomeranian? E -O -M -E. Okay, what's the third letter from the end of the word? I possibly. So, yeah, possibly. <laughs> there you go. So we're in playful mode and you did auditive the distraction forward and then you did a visual distraction backwards because you can't count backwards auditively, right? So your your working memory is now devoid of uh temporarily devoid until I now remind you of sisters. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So here's the deal. Uh I'd like you to imagine a future where you have resolved your emotions about this. Mm. Nothing else in the world has changed. Yeah. But, but you have resolved your emotions. So I'd like to ask you, do you have any other wronging that has ever happened to you where you now don't think about it anymore? Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Um, oh, many. <laughs> so just pick one. Um... Yeah, the university, when I had a, I forget what you call it, after you do your exams and then you're on a borderline for something, you go and have a talk about it. And the guy didn't like me and uh, put me down a grade, which meant I got a different grade in my degree. That hurt for a long time, but really... But, but that, that was unfair, wasn't it? It was unfair, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do you, do you, did you ever find out why they did that? No. No. You see, no. this is the thing with the brain. If it doesn't get closure, mm. it will keep ruminating in a way, and then mm. it'll forget it. And then in the future, when something else happens that reminds you of that, mm. there's a pattern recognition that goes in and says, oh, shit, it's happening again, something very unfair, and I still have no explanation. What's the next unexplained you know, wronging that will happen to me that I don't know how to handle? Mm. Right? So I want you to imagine... Now, with everything you know today, mm -hmm. being mature and wise and everything, <laughs> if, if you went back today to that graduation, mm -hmm. to the university where you had your exam mm -hmm. and there was a talk about it and they were mm -hmm. about, and you knew they were about to put you down a grade, mm -hmm. what would you have told them? What would you have done differently? I would have... Actually, I would have done havening beforehand or tapping so yeah. that I was calm and that yeah. I could answer clearly. He asked me, is this a bus ticket or not? <laughs> and I had no idea what he was talking about. 
Uh, but, and I was not, you know, obviously stressed, but I would do Havening and yep. or Tapping beforehand, and then okay. I could answer them clearly. So close your eyes. Mm -hmm. Go back in time. Mm -hmm. Did you ever see Doctor Who? Yes, of course. Yeah, so enter the Targus, TARDIS, mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. go back in time, and you enter there, and you, mm -hmm. you, you, know, you stop yourself before you're going in, and you start doing Havening, and you see yourself doing it, actually mm -hmm. doing it in your head right now. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you go in, and this is your second ride in this timeline, and you've actually been there before. So you go in and calmly, calmly respond. So when he says, is this a bus ticket or what, what do you tell him? What are you on about? Of course, it's not a bloody bus ticket. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's not a bloody bus ticket. <laughs> and how does that play out now? It means that I'm going to have control myself of what I'm doing. Yeah. And he was an arsehole, basically, and there was nothing I could do about it, but I actually had a good exam. Yeah. And mm -hmm. when somebody is an arsehole, uh, mm -hmm. if you imagine him right now, is he in front of you to the left or to the right? He's front, but slightly to the right. Okay. And if you, th if you think it. about your Pomeranians, are they to the front or to the right or to the left? In the ear. <laughs> okay. And if you had to put them on one side, would you put yeah. them on the left side or the right side? They're just right in the middle. Oh, wait, no, uh, not in the middle. You have to put them. It, you're driving a car. You can't put them in the windshield. So where do you want them? Right or left? Um, Keep hands going. Sorry. Uh, they're on the. They're actually on the left. They're actually on the left. Okay. So I want you to move that. First, I want you to take that professor. He was a professor. Yes. Yeah. So I want you to take that asshole and I want you to shrink him to the size of a cookie. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I want you to reverse him in age until he's eight years old wearing shorts. <laughs> Can you do that for me? <laughs> yes. Okay. And then I want you to move that eight year old cookie as far away to the right as you're comfortable. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that now? Cool. Cool. Okay. So now I want you to imagine bringing the wisdom of this, mm -hmm. everything you learned intuitively, consciously, subconsciously, and mm -hmm. the empowerment this would have given to you in your whole life. Yeah. Every single situation where you now would have been more empowered. Mm -hmm. Right. And right now with this empowerment, in a future where you can go back and change the whole thing with your sister before that letter is even written, yeah. what would you do differently now? Um, um, you know she potentially will send a letter. So first of all, she goes away, but you know she's never going to return to the UK. So yeah. you have to handle the whole dad thing differently, mm -hmm. don't you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't you can't be hoping she'll be come back to help you, can you? I never did, but um yeah, it's um no. Um it's really accepting then just uh, looking out for myself more than trying to do everything for everyone else. Yeah. And what so, would you do? What would you see that is different now that you are looking out more for yourself? Um, I would, um, yeah, I would have, um, right from the start when my mum died, I would have taken the offer that was there for solicitor, whatever anybody else said. Yeah. And, uh, done it my way which was cheaper and clear and cut and it didn't matter what anybody else did. I would have just done it the way that was the most obviously simple way for me as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you see yourself doing that, actually, mm -hmm. how does that feel? Feels uh, good because, um, People will be angry with me, but they are angry with me anyway. So it didn't yeah, take exactly. It. And, I and who's? I good. mean, whose problem is that if they're angry with you and you did the right thing? There's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
So which Pomeranian is cutest? Um, <laughs> probably the smallest one. Okay, we won't tell them, will we? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> He, he's, he's more affectionate. No, they're both. He's less angry at things, so he's, yeah. he's sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Manny. Oh, it's it's nice when people are less angry, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, sorry, dogs. Yeah. Okay. Oh. So here we go. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. I want you to imagine your sister when she was eight years old. Yeah, I can do that. Can you imagine her the size of a cookie? Yep, she's a chocolate chip cookie. Yep, chip on the shoulder. <laughs> yes, very many. Yeah, very good. And imagine her being somewhere between you and the professor on the right side. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about that? Fine. Yeah. Good. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Nice. How many more siblings? Uh, brother. So think about brother. What happens? That's also not good, so he has to go on the right side as well. Uh, just do it. Just do the same thing. Cookie, eight years old. Mm-hmm. Does he have short pants or what? Uh, short pants. Um, he has nappies on. Actually, he's gone down to. Oh, excellent! Yeah. Nappies, beautiful. And mm. is, is it's is it chocolate chip or is it something else? Gingerbread. No, it's a custard cream. <laughs> okay, it's a custard cream. And you place that exactly where it needs to be to have no impact on you right now. Yeah, he's, he's just in front of the sister. To, yeah, nearer yeah. to me, but very close to her. Yeah. Right over there. And that's fine, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's good. So go back to your mom. Mm-hmm. Is there anything you would have liked to tell her that you didn't tell her? My mom? Hmm? No. Could, if, uh, if you could I tell her something that. right now, what would that be? Um, no, what is important about, actually about my mom is that I haven't been able to really grieve properly to the end mm-hmm. because of all the other stuff. So yeah. it's really nice now to just accept her. As she... Yes. And here's the thing, when you accept something, mm-hmm. well, when people leave us, we know, we know we're going to die. We know people are going to die. So it's not that. And grief to many people, I don't know about you, but to many people, it's about love. You don't yeah. grieve the death of a tyrant. Mm-mm. And once somebody has died and you've, the grieving process has happened and you're done with it, I, my grandmother used to tell me, Ulf, I'm going to die. And I want you right now to imagine that I'm dead. Because I want to see the smile you have in your face when you remember me the way I was my best. Mm-hmm. That's nice. Isn't that a crazy thing? It is, but it's nice. Yeah. So imagine if you were, I'm not saying you can or can't, but imagine if you would put the smile in your face that mm-hmm. if your mom could see it now, this mm-hmm. is the smile you have when you think about her having passed. Mm-hmm. So it's like a statue. We don't do statues of people sitting on the toilet. We do statues of them sitting on a horse looking proud or with a flag because we want to remember them at their best. Are you with me? Yeah. She's so sitting if, in her chair. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Describe it. It's a chair um, in her front room at home where she often sat. And in those years after my dad died, we were very close closer than ever before so that's really lovely and anytime i was there we ended the day with her sitting in that chair and behind her she had um a ceramic teddy that belonged to my father and a photograph of them and there were some plates on the wall behind her and um i have those plates here and yeah. it would be lovely to remember her there without Wonderful triggers and yeah. so can no, do no. That. if you could put something between you and the triggers what would you put between them you know between you and a custard cookie and a chocolate chip and an asshole professor what would you put between them <laughs> and a bus ticket don't forget that um and the bus ticket so <laughs> would you put one of the plates there no because no, I want, would... no no i want them no. with my mom They're my... exactly so what would you like what, what would be a good good metaphorical uh barrier or just 
Would you just grow some trees? Um, I don't even think I need to. I think that I have now um, that image, vision mm -hmm. of my mum. And when I see those plates, I see her only now. Yeah. So I think it's already, I want to keep them just yes. in that. Heaven. Yes, keep them in that thing. Mm -hmm. And then I want you to add dad to this. Mm -hmm. To add what? Your dad. Add my dad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's there on his sofa. <laughs> right. And could you imagine, you know, somewhere in the future, I don't know what you believe in, but some people believe that, you know, at, at one point in time in eternity, we'll be sitting around a campfire with everybody who ever lived. It's going to be a very big campfire, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. And imagine that you're sitting there next to your mom and dad, and they saw everything that happened, including that letter and the way things were dealt with. And they're saying, you should have taken the offer and done it your way, cheaper and clearer in the most obvious, simple way. And My father would have done that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, so they knew that your father would have done that, but they're mm -hmm. smiling because it's all over. Yeah. And they knew that I did take care of them. Yeah. And they knew that you did take care of them. Mm -hmm. So imagine, what would you like to be feeling then? in eternity, sitting with them? Um, peace. Peace. And if you felt peace freedom. there and then? Freedom. Yes? Oh. Freedom. Okay, freedom. Yes. Mm -hmm. What kind of freedom is that freedom? That freedom is acceptance of hmm. how, I am, how they are and how things are. I'm yeah. feeling okay with it. Yeah, I'm feeling okay with it. Mm -hmm. And if you had freedom and acceptance and feeling okay with it, mm -hmm. if there was a special smile that went along with freedom and acceptance and feeling okay with it? Yeah, exactly. And could you just turn up the volume of that just slightly, the freedom and acceptance smile? Yeah. Sure. Uh, okay. Is that the same kind of smile Martin Luther King would have? Um depend on his situation <laughs> oh just freedom and acceptance yeah uh, of course it would depend yeah mm -hmm. i don't know but it's a good freedom and acceptance for me yeah so what who is a person that embodies freedom and acceptance for you uh gandhi gandhi mm -hmm. i was yeah so I was sensing a, a public figure and a leader there. <laughs> and then I went into my own. That's very unclean, Ulf. Shame on me, okay? <laughs> so we have Gandhi and we have freedom and we have acceptance and we have mom and dad. Imagine Gandhi being around the same campfire. Everybody who wants to can be there, okay? And now we're going to do something, you know, slightly... Some people would think it odd. Some people would think it's completely clear. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. Are you prepared to try it? Sure. Okay. Um, so just open your eyes mm -hmm. and put your hands up like this. Mm -hmm. And imagine that all four of you, mom, dad, Gandhi, and you do this around the fire. And then you do like this. Watch me. <laughs> cool. Okay. So now I want you to just notice what is different what do you notice right now that is different? I have a rainbow in me. You have a rainbow in you. That's nice. Mm -hmm. uh, and how do you feel about that rainbow right now? Wonderful. It's very really good. And how do you feel about everything else? Free from it. Free from it? Mm. So, so if, if you go back and think now, because we didn't do SUDs, because I, I don't no. always bother with that. I mean, they're good. They're a measurement. But you were so clearly going into yeah. the emotion that I didn't want to stop and also put a number on it. Yeah. That, that's like grading how deep a wound is. Right. So if you but think about it now. It was a nine. I can okay. tell you that. Yeah. And where, and where is it now for you? Zero. Zero? Mm -hmm. And is that, good or, is that good or bad? Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. So like, um, yeah. Yeah. Cannot explain why. How wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you just rest in this for two seconds, and you, mm -hmm. you can still do a little bit of shuckling if you want. Yeah. You know, whatever makes you feel good right now. I mean, we're done with the session. Mm -hmm. 
And here's the deal. I usually don't speak a lot about it afterwards yeah. because your system should be allowed to run around in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like a happy Pomeranian that thinks that somebody hid a sweet somewhere or somebody dropped something from a table. You know, just looking for what else is there that is good with this? Um, I can move on. And this yeah. is the thing that I can move on. Yeah. And if you think about the professor right now, Mm-hmm. What a joke. Yeah. I mean that he's joke, a... right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you think about your brother? Yeah. Yeah. He I could accept the situation with him anyway, but um yeah, there was a lot of problems there. But a custard cream is I have to tell you, uh he went um one, you know, English people are not that good at going on holiday to other cultures. Well they never used to be. And he went one time to I forget even where, Spain or something like that. And he couldn't find custard creams there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so no civilization, right? No, that's right. <laughs> so that's custard cream. Um, yeah, so I'm good with him. Yeah. And, and what pops into your consciousness if you think about your sister right now and that letter and everything? Um, she's really a sad person. Um but she, um, she has her, yeah, I don't need, I'm actually happy not having her in my life, um, but yeah. she's not controlling it anymore or having any influence. No. Uh, but really it's her, she has a lot of issues herself. But if I had been born like her and lived her life exactly the way she lived it, mm. might I have turned out the same way? Um, no, because you didn't have the, uh, if you had the same parents and the yeah. same, yeah. everything, everything, I everything that happened to her, if mm. everything that happened to her happened mm. to me, might I turn out the same way? It's possible, but I think that she has choices. Everyone has choices. Do you know Robert Sapolsky from Stanford? Mm-hmm. His new book is called Determined. He debates whether we have choices or not. He says okay. there is no such thing as free will. Okay. Oh, I like that because I would agree with that too. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason he says that, it's interesting. I, lo I love what he does. I love his work. And yes. it's so much of it depends is in there because he mm -hmm. has this lecture called Humans at Our Best and Worst, mm -hmm. which is, you know, what is it that decides if we pull the trigger or not? What is it that decides if we're nice or not? to a person, mm -hmm. uh, and, and he says, it's not about morals and character, it's not that simple. It's about, w did we sleep last night? Uh, was our mother stressed when we were in the womb before being birthed? Are, do we have four generations of people that needed to be aggressive to, to guard mm -hmm. their herds rather than collaborate with other farmers? There are so many aspects to that. Mm -hmm. So that, I mean, I don't agree with him that there is no such thing, but I mm -hmm. do agree that it's a lot less than we probably may think. Mm -hmm which is why we need to yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah which is why we need to work clean. Uh, do you feel that this has landed with you right now the whole thing? Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's 35 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the average time of a session. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be longer and we did quite complete. We did a lot of stuff. We did the professor, yeah. we did mom, dad, brother, mm -hmm. sister, letter, death, life, mm -hmm. Gandhi, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and there's time for everything, right? Mm -hmm. And is it okay with you right now if I just explain a little bit of what happened and you can give your perspective on it, or do you want to keep it to yourself? No, that's fine. I'd love okay. to. Yeah. So for those of you watching, uh, mm -hmm. everything I say, every single thing I say is as, you know, I, I'm, I, I, I'm a musician. I'm used to being on stage. When you're on stage, everything you say is scrutinized. There is, you don't get away by saying, um, or sorry, or... <laughs> You know, so everything you do has to lead towards the goal. And in a concert, that is for people to feel good when they leave. In a therapy or coaching session, it's for the other person to feel good when they leave. So it's, it's the exact same thing, right? And so I, what I found out doing music was that concert could be therapy for many, and therapy is a concert for one. Mm -hmm. 
So clean guides everything I do. And as you noticed, it doesn't guide everything I do because it depends. If I feel that we have playfulness, if I calibrate that we can get back to the laughter, that we're not going into any flooding or a reaction, because that's useless. Because you want to find a new perspective for this. Mm -hmm. And to do that, your brain has to be in the social engagement mode from the polyvagal theory. In social engagement mode, you smile reciprocally. You, you smile and you counter smile and you smile back. You do not smile when you're in self-defense or when you're in freeze. So to be in, to, to go into that ab reaction and go there and find it and get used to it and flood it, it's completely crazy according to me because the person is getting into a state of non-creativeness, non-fighting solutionness, right? Mm -hmm. So we need to keep it in the playful and the smile. That's why we need to go back to the Pomeranian and, and you know, Gandhi and whatever, because that's the most important part of the safety. And then I reflected almost every single word you said to you. And if you saw my notes, you would say, I, if, if I read you my notes, because I need the words to be able to remember to reflect them at the end of the session and to see what might be useful in the role havening. Uh, there's the science of an excuse that was the reason for this dialogue about role havening, right? So we didn't really do role havening where somebody said something in that way, but you, we did in a way because you said to the professor and you said to your mom. So it was role havening, but it didn't really follow the science of an excuse, but it doesn't have to follow that. I use that, you know, as an underpinning for what needs to happen for you not to feel wronged here and to understand that the professor is an asshole. And if you had been calm, that would have been fine. That's kind of an outcome havening with in partly a roll haven because you told him of course it's not a bloody bus ticket so there you are roll haven right and the same way with the other parts um i also do timeline so we go into the past but we also mm -hmm. go into the future a future and this is hypnotic language pattern it's a future where everything has worked out and that's a hidden command everything has worked out right that doesn't mean I'm manipulating you. It means I'm nudging you towards a place to see if you can imagine that this could be resolved in the future. Mm -hmm. And you're tapping into that. D did you buy your house? Did you get a mortgage on uh, and buy it? Here, yep. Yeah, yeah. So what you did is you borrowed from your future self. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You said, I'm going to be paying this 20 years from now. So you actually borrowed 20 years into the future to get a house today. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're doing with timeline. If you can go to the future and you can have an outcome in the future where this might have worked just in your imagination, then you're borrowing that emotion to right now so that you can deal with it today. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought of it that way, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you have the, you know, the letter from sister and a diaphragm and we had university and exam and borderline and down a grade and havening before is this a bus ticket and would have taken you know the offer and done it your way cheaper and cleaner and the most obvious simple way all these things are written down as we speak and that's why i do the shuckling because it means i can type outside the screen <laughs> <laughs> and at the end we had freedom and acceptance mm. and so, actually was this what i was going to say is that um the it might not have been roll havening was sitting in a chair or something, but for me, <clears> I was able to have resolution with my mom and with our letter. So that was really, really important. Yeah. And the, and the professor. And that. And we also did some uh, visual spatial sorting. So in, in if you go into cognitive neuroscience, uh, we have this visual spatial scratch pad in our brain where we sort stuff, just like garbage, you know, mm -hmm. plastic, metal, burn, food. And what we did was usually we sort. I mean, everybody's different. It depends. But usually we sort stuff right, left. And usually we sort good, bad. So we had to find out what was your good side. It was your left side. That's where you wanted your mom and everything. What's your? Where do you put the garbage? To the right. Okay. So you put it to the right, how far away? As far away as you need to, to be able to feel good. And we also, the reason that we did the cookie and the eight-year-old is 
it, when you reverse somebody back into a young age and see them like that, they're not a threat anymore. And it kind of evokes a bit of empathy for their situation because they're obviously weren't assholes when they were eight year old, or maybe they were, who knows. <laughs> <laughs> but if they're also cookies, then your brain is now latching on qualities that are not necessarily threatening or bad mm. into the way you sort that, the, the idea of that, the concept of that person. Are you with me? Yeah. And I think I've, I've, I've got that fixed, a custard cream and a chocolate chip. It's, it's fixed now. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's so much easier for the brain because now you have more senses. There's a taste, yeah. a smell, a shape, a form, a texture. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, well, thank and, you. I, I really appreciate this. I, mm -hmm. I, do you have any thoughts if you temporarily take off your, your uh, personal uh, hat and put on your practitioner hat? What mm -hmm. do you take with you from this? I love the um, left right thing. I've never done that before, um, but I realize now that I do do that. Um, I was really strong about putting my dogs over on the left side, and I thought you wanted to put me on the on the right, but I, no, no, they're going on the left. So uh, that's weird, but it was really, really good. And um, timeline, I've not used a lot, but that's really sensible. Um, no, it's really good and. I am a visual person. It was great to be able to do that. And I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Cool. And you also noted that we did gold mining in the beginning. We yeah. started by not going into the problem because I could sense, I do that anyhow, but I could yeah. also sense that it was emotional. So we wanted to establish mm -hmm. a neural scheme, a neural network that was a resource network that we could go back to, which we did all the time. So mm -hmm. you should really give your Pomeranians, they're both Pomeranians? Yeah. Yeah, you should give them a treat now because they really oh, okay. helped us in this session. <laughs> Thank you very much, mm -hmm. You take care now. Yep. Bye -bye. Stay great. Mm -hmm.